and welcome to Splotch Code. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own blocks within Scratch that will make your code a lot simpler and easier to follow and look neater on the screen and save you quite a bit of time as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a look at some code that we've got here for our cat. Now, if we have a look, I'll just click and we'll have a look at what he does. So he's walking, jumping, walking, jumping, walking, jumping. So it's quite simple. All he's doing is walking some steps, jumping, walking, jumping, walking, jumping, turn around and do the same thing back. But to do that, let's have a look at how much code there is. There's a lot of code there and a lot of it's just repeating the same things. Now, obviously, we've been able to use some repeats in here to get it, to make it a little bit easier, but there's a better way. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So what Scratch allows you to do is use a function called My Blocks. You'll see it over down here, that little pink button on the left hand side. So it allows us to create a block where we can put a set of instructions in there. And then every time we want it to do that particular thing, we just use that block instead of the three or four or five or ten instructions that add together to make that particular movement. So in this case, we've got the cat walking and jumping. So what we can do is we can create a block that is defined as the walk part, and we can do one for the block. And then every time we want him to walk or jump, we only need to use those blocks. So let's have a look at how that works. So if I go to my blocks and we go to make a block, now I'm going to make a block called walk and then hit OK. So you'll see it's so now, got, I've now got a little thing here that says define walk. So I need to tell it, what does walk mean? When I say walk, what do I want it to do? So we've already got that in some of the code here. So I'm just going to break apart our code a little bit here so that we can use what's there. So we know that this bit here is what's making him walk. The one where he is walking. 10 steps and his costume is changing and doing that 10 times. So if we have a click there, we can see that's what a walk is. So now we need to define what we want jump to be. So we'll make a new block and we'll make it say jump. And again, now we've got a little bit of code here that says define jump. Well, what is jump? Well, that's this little bit here that says go up change my y by 30 up wait a few wait a tiny tiny bit and then come back down so let's have a look if i click that you'll see that's getting him to jump okay so what do we need in our code so we need do need some of these things that we had at the start still the when the green flag is clicked get him in the right position have him pointing the right way and so that when we turn to get him to change direction, the changing of direction is moving left and right rather than up and down or all around. So we still need that little bit of instruction at the start, but then we want him to, once he does that, we want him to walk. So now instead of having to have all this instruction here, we'll get the walk block that's sitting over here and we'll bring that over. And then we want him to jump. So we'll use jump, walk and jump. And we do still want him to do that three times. So we can put the repeat three times on that and he will walk, jump, walk, jump, walk, jump. Okay, that's awesome. So we can pop that into our code. Now we want him to chain turn around, which we do have here, that point in minus 90. So that will get him to walk, jump, walk, jump, walk, jump, and turn around. And then we just want him to do a walk and a jump again three times. So we'll get another repeat. We'll put a three into that. And then we'll go back to my blocks. And again, we can say walk and jump. So he is now going to walk and jump three times, turn around, and walk and jump another three times. 
what that means is all this extra code where we repeated what we'd done before as we were heading back the other way, we don't need anymore. So we can take that away. So if we have a look now, if I click on the green flag, there he goes, he's turned and he's walking back. So we've got our little definitions here of what walk and jump mean. And every time we want him to walk and jump, we just need to use those blocks instead of all of that. And so these ones sort of sit off to the side with the instructions of what to do. What that means is our main code here is much shorter and much simpler. So while that might not seem like a lot on a simple thing like this, you imagine if you've got a game or a story where you've got your character doing lots and lots, the code is going to get pretty crazy. So the more times you can use a block like this to define a few of the steps in one thing, especially if it's something you're going to use over and over again like this, where you might be walking and jumping lots of times in your game, then that is definitely worth trying to make your own block and create that so that you can just pull in a walk or a jump or whatever it is you want it to be. I hope that has helped for you to understand how to make your code look a little bit, a little bit simpler and save you some time. Thanks for watching Splotch Code.